As we discuss and work with series, there are two important series that come up more often than others, at least in our study of mathematics. And that's going to be the arith arithmetic series and the geometric series. We're going to look at the arithmetic series in this video. The question is, how do we find the sum of an arithmetic series? And before we find the sum of an arithmetic series, we're going to start by defining exactly what is an arithmetic sequence. And if you recall, a sequence is a list of numbers, an ordered list of numbers, and a series is the sum of the sequence. Right now, we're just looking at the ordered list. In an arithmetic sequence, each term is equal to the previous term plus a common difference. For example, I might have the sequence 5, 9, 13, 17, and so on. And I can see between these terms, I'm adding 4 each time. That piece that I'm adding, adding 4 each time, is what we call the common difference. The difference between the numbers is always 4. That's our common difference. And you'll often see the common difference represented with the letter D. And so for this sequence, we could define it with a recursive formula and say the first term is equal to 5. And then every nth term after that is the previous term plus that common difference. Or we can do it explicitly and say any nth term is equal to now, you might be inclined to think we take 4 times the number, because we're adding 4 each time and repeated addition is multiplication. But we're actually going to do 4 times the term number minus 1, because that's going to account for the first term not being numbered 0, but actually being numbered 1. And then we need to add to that the starting value, in this case, of 5. Now, if you notice, for example, when n equals 3 for the third term, we would have 5 plus 4 times 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. And you notice the third term, n equals 3, is 13. And so we can kind of make a general formula from this pattern. that if we want a recursive formula, we will say a sub 1 is equal to whatever that first term is. We need to define the first term. And then a sub n is always going to be equal to the previous term plus the common difference. That gives us the recursive form. More often, what we're going to be interested in is the explicit formula just because it's easier to work with when we have lots of terms that we're interested in. And the explicit formula is going to be a sub n is equal to the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. Those formulas are going to be helpful to us 
as we work with arithmetic sequences. But we're not actually interested in arithmetic sequences. What we're interested in is an arithmetic series. And as you might expect, since a series is a sum of the sequence, an arithmetic sequence is the sum of an arithmetic sequence. We want to add up all the numbers of an arithmetic sequence. And we're going to look for a pattern to help us do it quicker. And a great example comes out of the old math history textbooks with a mathematician named Carl Friedrich Goss. And Carl Friedrich Goss was an unruly student. And his teacher was very frustrated with him one day. And so his teacher put him in the corner and said, OK, you have to stay in that corner until you add all the numbers from 1 to 100. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. All the way up to 98 plus 99 plus 100. Well, as is common with misbehaved children in elementary school, they're often very smart. And that was really the case with Carl Friedrich Goss, because he looked at this problem and he said, well, if I take the first number and pair it with the last number, 1 plus 100 is 101. And if I take the next number and pair it with the next number, 2 plus 99 is equal to 101. And 3 plus 98 is equal to 101. In fact, he could do this all the way up to the other side even when we're doing 98 plus 3 equals 101, 99 plus 2 equals 101, and 100 plus 1 equals 101. And if I've done that with all the numbers from 1 to 100, I know there are 100 of these. And so Goss figured quite quickly that he could take 100 times 101, and that would give him the sum of all 100 of those 101 things. The problem is, is each number was represented twice. You see the number 1 is on top and the bottom. Number 2 is on top and bottom. 3 is on top and bottom. He's actually doubled his result. So he knew all he had to do was divide by 2. Well, 100 divided by 2 is 50 times 101. And that's actually quite easy to do because it's just 101 gives you 50, 50. And so in a matter of seconds, Goss shouts out the answer to his teacher that the answer is 50, 50. And of course, he lost his recess privileges and everything else because the teacher figured he cheated somehow. There's no way he could have added up all those numbers that quickly. But in fact, he did by using this nice little formula, which we're going to steal for us to be able to add a formula to sum the first n terms of an arithmetic series. Doing exactly what Goss did then, we'll use s sub n for the sum of the first n terms. Goss said there were 100 things that he added together. That was the number of terms times what he added together was the first term plus the last term. 1 plus 100 was 101. And then he divided by 2 because each number was counted twice. This formula then, Goss gets credit for it because he used it in elementary school to drive his teacher insane, is used to add up the first several terms of an arithmetic sequence. So now if I give you an example, say 5, 
9, 13, 17, and say the sequence keeps going for the first 50 terms, we can add up all 50 of these terms because we have an arithmetic sequence. We see we're adding 4 each time. Because I have an arithmetic sequence where I'm adding the same amount every time, all I have to do to find the sum of the first 50 terms is I take the number of terms times the first term plus the last term. Gee, what's the last term to divide by 2? Well, we have an explicit formula that says a sub n is equal to the first term plus the difference times n minus 1. So we need to find the 50th term, which is equal to the first term plus the difference. We just found out that common difference is 4 times the term number, which is 50, minus 1. Or 5 plus 4 times 49. Or 5 plus 196, which equals 201. 201 is the 50th term. And so that's what I'm going to put into my formula. And so now we have 50 times 206 divided by 2. And that's going to be 5,150 is the sum of the first 50 terms of this sequence. So sometimes we do have to dig a little bit. We had to figure out what the 50th term was by using the explicit formula for the 50th term. But that's not too difficult. We've got a formula for that as well. Let's try another example. Let's say, given the first term is negative 5, the common difference is 2, and the last term is 21. We're going to find the sum of all of those terms. The problem here is we don't know what term number we're doing. So we'll go back to that explicit formula that says a sub n is equal to the first term plus the difference times n minus 1 a sub n we know is 21. a sub 1 is negative 5. The difference is 2. We're just looking for what n minus 1 is, or what n is, actually. Well, if I distribute through the parentheses, we get 2n minus 2. Combine like terms, we get negative 7 plus 2n. Add 7 and 28 equals 2n. Divide by 2, and n equals 14. I now know that there are 14 terms in this series, so I'm ready to find the sum of the first 14 terms. The sum is n, which is 14, times the first term plus the last term, negative 5 plus 21, divided by 2, or 14 times 16 divided by 2, which is 112. We know that the first 14 terms of this series described is going to add up to 112. In our first example, we had to do some work to find what the 50th term was. In this example, we had to do some work to figure out which term number we were working with. Each problem might be a little bit different in that we have to find a different piece of information. But the idea is exactly the same either way. Let's say we're given that a sub 50 equals 149. And this time, I'm even going to tell you the sum of the first 50 terms is 3,775. I want you to find the common difference and the first term. 
Well, we really have two equations to help us get there. We know that the sum of the first n terms is n times the first term plus the last term divided by 2. And we also know that the nth term is the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. Let's plug in what we know into these formulas and see what that leaves us to find. In the blue formula, the sum formula, We've got the sum of the first 50 terms. We know that is 3,775 is equal to n. We know there are 50 terms times, we don't know the first term, plus we do know the 50th term is 149 divided by 2. In the second formula, if we plug in what we know, a sub n, the 50th term is 149 equals the first term. We don't know that right now. Plus the difference. We don't know that right now. But we do know n that there are 50 terms minus 1. So I could simplify that and say 149 equals a1 plus 49d. Looking at our two options, the blue equation, the sum equation, is probably the most useful right now because there's only one missing piece, the a sub 1. So let's solve this equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to clear the denominator. That's going to give us 7,550 equals 50 times a1 plus 149. I could distribute, but I'm just going to go ahead and divide out the 50 from both sides. Because 7550 divided by 50 equals 151 equals a1 plus 149. And when we subtract 149 from both sides, we now know the first term of this sum of this series is 2, which is helpful because then I can plug that into my green equation. And I know that 149 is equal to 2 plus 49d. Subtract 2 from both sides, and I get 147 equals 49d. And divide both sides by 49. We end up with a difference of 3. So now I know my first term is 2, my common difference is 3, my 50th term is 149, and the sum of all 50 terms is 3,775. So we really have two big equations with these arithmetic sequences, where we have a common difference between the terms of our series. Using those two formulas, you should be able to find any missing pieces a problem might ask for. So now it's your turn to practice some of these. Go ahead and take a look at the homework in the book, and let me know if you have any questions.